Hello, everyone, and welcome to another brand new episode on my channel, Wonder Boho Book Club. Today, I'll be discussing the book, The Book of Joy: Lasting Happiness in a Changing World, written by the Nobel Peace Prize laureates, the 14th Dalai Lama and Archbishop Desmond Tutu. Desmond Tutu was a South African Anglican bishop and theologian, known for his work as an anti-apartheid and human rights activist. The 14th Dalai Lama, known as Gyalwa Rinpoche to the Tibetan people, is the current Dalai Lama. He is the highest spiritual leader and former head of the state of Tibet. In April 2015. Archbishop Tutu made the long journey to Dharamshala in India to celebrate the Dalai Lama's 80th birthday. Their week together was a rare and never before seen opportunity and also the inspiration for writing this book. In the Book of Joy, the authors explore what true joy is and confront the obstacles in our way of experiencing joy, like stress, sadness, and anger. They offer us the eight pillars of joy to stay happy no matter what, so we can live life without worry. They share various stories, words of wisdom, and scientific findings. They also share their daily rituals and practices that keep them at peace and enhance their spirituality. The Book of Joy brings to light the pain and experience of the author's lives, and how they manage to find peace through all the struggle. Reading this book might inspire you to find peace in your own life. Before moving ahead, please don't forget to subscribe to my channel. Part one: Suffering is an inevitable part of finding happiness. Suffering is a part of life for many people, but it's not all bad. Sometimes the hard times are what make the good times that much better. And even if you feel like you're living through something horrible, it's worth it in the end. People often experience pain in life, and it can be a positive thing. For example, childbirth is a time of pain, but it leads to the pleasures that come with motherhood. If all women decided to avoid the pain of childbirth, humanity would simply die out. Again, it's not uncommon to find people. Who are completely deprived of the joys of life? For example, Nelson Mandela was in prison for 27 years and was treated terribly. He had to sleep on the ground with little food or water, and he would labor hard during his days. People might have thought that after everything he went through, Nelson Mandela must have been seriously broken. But rather than becoming bitter or resentful, His time in prison led him to cultivate empathy and kindness, which he later showed not just towards his political adversaries, but to his apartheid jailers too. This compassion later led to Mandela becoming the first president of the independent nation of South Africa. Living a life of pleasure without any sorrow is not possible. Looking at others in pain may be difficult. But it helps to keep your perspective on what you have to be happy about. Part two: Controlling our reaction to the external circumstances. If your health is good, you're less likely to get sick in flu season, even if there is a high chance of getting infected. If your health is already poor, the chances of getting sick are more likely because you're susceptible to illness. Being stronger mentally will help protect you against negative thoughts and emotions, just like being physically healthy makes you immune to disease. If you get used to coping with difficult situations, then when a tough moment comes along, you will be far better equipped to overcome it. On the flip side, if you're in a fragile state of mind, one difficult event could lead to a series of problems. So. How can we build our mental immunity? First of all, it's important to understand that the fearful and frustrated feeling you have comes from your mind and not reality. You can feel relaxed, happy, and confident at all times if you wish. 
the only thing you have to do is work on your mental health. Also, it's important not to place blame on yourself when you can't control a certain situation. For example, Desmond Tutu once was left frustrated by trying to get to a meeting but getting stuck in horrible traffic. Previously, he would have gotten very angry and frustrated at traffic jams. He would have felt the need to express his anger through grinding his teeth. But over time he came to realize that it's all good because they just give him more time to be quiet and they provide a perfect opportunity for some deep introspection. Realizing this allowed him to stop grinding his teeth, which he had been doing for years and would only make him angrier. It's possible for you to do the same. Try to accept the situation. Don't think about it as a bad thing and use the time for practicing patience. Part 3. The Power of Compassion Western society has a lot of higher standards in everyday living and people place really high value on certain material things. Whether it be bigger apartments or a better career, there's always something that seems covetous and those desires make it easy to stereotype with the phrase more is always better. Yet, what really matters is how you perceive these goals. When you fail to achieve your goals, your automatic reaction is usually fear or anger. You might be afraid of not getting what you want, that no one loves you, or not feeling respected at your workplace or your social circle. If anger comes from those fears, it can lead to long-term emotional damage. The best way to overcome these negative feelings is to cultivate feelings of compassion and love for yourself and others. Also, along with compassion, sadness also has a surprising power of connecting with people. The results of a study that tested how sadness affects people were actually positive in some cases. It was found, for example, that participants having low levels of sadness are more sensitive to social norms and have better judgment as compared to those who are happy. Part 4. Loneliness and envy can be detrimental to your health. Imagine how many people you interact with each day, including people in your home and workplace. Most would say fairly few. This limited interaction with others can lead to a variety of problems, including loneliness and low self-esteem, which could manifest as anxiety and depression. The best way to counter loneliness is through being open-hearted and trusting. Research has found that people who use first-person pronouns more often are prone to heart attacks. This is because the result of being too focused on myself can lead to isolation and loneliness, which will in turn lead to more heart problems. To prevent loneliness, you should take the time to socialize with people and get to know them better. Envy is something that should be avoided too. Envy is harder to get over because people naturally want what other people already have and are biologically wired this way. We also want others to judge us fairly, and we want adequate compensation and recognition for our hard work. However, although fairness might seem like a more ideal goal, it can make those who feel left out unhappy in the process. In order to achieve the best results, it's important to distinguish between what we really want and our unrealistic expectations. Part 5 Near-death experiences People who have had near-death experiences will tell you that they appreciate life more. Being on the verge of losing something reminds you of how quickly things can change, which makes you treasure family, friends and everything else in your life even more. For example, the Chinese Cultural Revolution led to the systematic and fruitless eradication of Tibetan culture and language as China annexed Tibet under its territory. 
The Chinese officials burned thousands of books by Tibetan authors and desecrated countless Tibetan statues and monasteries. When the Dalai Lama arrived in India as a refugee in 1959, he channeled this intense grief and pain in a positive direction, and used it to promote what was left of the Tibetan culture. It's important to remember that accepting the reality and inevitability of death actually makes us more appreciative of life. Testament two two four one was not expected to survive past his teenage years. And went through a lot of tough times in his youth, owing to the multitude of diseases he suffered from. However, he emerged victorious and mentally strong, having come to terms with his mortality. To listen to more interesting summaries, please subscribe to my channel. Part six: Perspective and Humility. Now that you have learned how to tone down your negative mental and emotional states, it's time to start looking at things from a different perspective, and learn how to plant positive thoughts for happiness. The first step toward this is understanding and internalizing the eight pillars of joy. The first of the eight pillars is perspective. If you widen your perspective just a little. You would see that life offers no guarantees, and anything could change at any time. This would make you feel like every day is an epic adventure, and would help bring peace to your journey. Humility is the second pillar of joy. The power of perspective is important, but it's just as vital to keep your humility levels. It's harder to find happiness. If you always perceive yourself to be better than others, for instance, when he was a young man, the Dalai Lama used to get very nervous before delivering spiritual teachings. He would think that he was more spiritual than his audience, and that he was above everyone else, which in turn led to him feeling lonely and anxious. However, by learning to see himself as just another person. He was able to get rid of his anxiety and be more approachable. Part seven, humor and acceptance. Humor is the third pillar of joy. Humor is a powerful tool that can be used for different purposes. It can be used to entertain, make people laugh, or even to make them think. Humor has the ability to change people's perspectives. And make them see things from different angles. It's a universal language and has the power to bring people together. The importance of humor in our life cannot be overstated. It helps us cope with difficult situations and can make our life less stressful and more enjoyable. Acceptance is the fourth pillar of joy. It can be tough to feel happiness when you have to deal with difficult moments in life, whether you like it or not. The key to feeling joy is not about suppressing the negative emotions, but rather accepting them and finding ways to turn them into something positive. One way that this can be done is by using a gratitude journal, where you list three things that you are grateful for every day. Part Eight: Gratitude and Forgiveness. Gratitude is the fifth pillar of joy. Gratitude is the acknowledgement and appreciation of what one has. It is also an attitude of kindness and thankfulness. Gratitude can be a powerful force. It's not just about thinking positive thoughts and being happy all the time. But also a way to find meaning in our lives and give back to others. A lot of people think that gratitude is a sign of weakness, but in reality, it's the opposite. Gratitude has been proven to have many benefits. One such benefit is the ability to reduce stress and anxiety levels. It also helps us stay more positive and optimistic by looking at what we are grateful for. Rather than focusing on what we are lacking in our lives, another benefit of gratitude is that 
It can help us sleep better at night because of the release of serotonin, which makes us feel happy and relaxed. There are many ways that we can practice gratitude every day, from sending thank you cards to people who have helped us out, to writing down three things that we are grateful for each night before going to sleep. Forgiveness is the sixth pillar. Forgiveness is the act of letting go of resentment and anger towards someone who has hurt you. It's a form of self-care that can help you to live a happier life. Forgiveness does not mean that the person who hurt you will get away with his or her actions. It means that you are not going to let the person's actions affect you any more than they already have. Forgiveness is one of the most important qualities that we need to develop in our life. It has so many benefits that it's hard to list them all, but there are few things that come to mind immediately. First and foremost, forgiveness brings peace and happiness in your life. It means you are not carrying any baggage or negativity from the past with you. You can live a happier and more peaceful life without any worries about the future. Secondly, forgiveness helps you grow as a person and become a better human being. It helps you understand other people's perspectives and empathize with them, which in turn helps you understand yourself better too. Part 9. Compassion and Generosity Do you like giving gifts? Giving is a common gesture among humans and it can make people happy, not only the receivers, but the givers as well. The best way to enjoy the feeling of giving someone a gift is by picking the right gift for them. That's why compassion is the seventh pillar of joy. Feeling compassion for others is actually a natural self-interest that humans possess. They call it reciprocal altruism which means you feel joy when you help each other out. Our brains release endorphins when we help others, and these natural chemicals can result in a sense of euphoria. Thus, showing kindness to others is the most rewarding thing you can do for yourself. Finally, generosity is the eighth pillar of joy. We often focus on our own happiness and forget about the happiness of others. Putting in some time to make other people happy can do wonders for our own happiness. In order to make people happy, one does not need to spend money or buy expensive things for them. One can just spend time with them and do any small thing that may bring some joy to their life. There is a great example of this in the movie The Pursuit of Happiness. The protagonist, Chris Gardiner, was a homeless man living with his son. He was struggling to make ends meet, but he never forgot about the importance of making others happy. He would go out and buy toys for children, who he knew were less fortunate than him, just because it made him feel good. Conclusion In a world that can be full of hardship, we are endlessly striving for happiness and joy. The path to happiness is not always easy to find and follow but it's definitely worth trying. To experience true bliss, practice implementing the eight pillars of joy. Perspective, humility, humor, acceptance, forgiveness, gratitude, compassion, and generosity in your life, thereby decreasing your attachment to material objects and focusing your energy and actions on your own and others' well-being. Thank you for watching this episode. Please don't forget to subscribe. Your likes, comments and shares are highly appreciated. See you soon in our next episode.